In this PowerPoint, we're going to examine an important application of acid-base equilibrium, buffers. We'll discuss what buffers are, how they are made, and how we can use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to calculate their pH. Buffers are solutions that resist changes in pH with the addition of an acid or a base. So much of chemistry is pH dependent. It's important to be able to maintain a relatively consistent pH for a variety of chemical systems over time, and buffers allow us to do that. Here are pictures of two solutions which both have a pH of 8.0. The one on the right is a buffer, and the one on the left is not. The yellow co color comes from an acid base indicator, methyl orange. It's always yellow when it's in solutions that have a pH greater than 4.0, but below 4.0, the color will change to red. Now in this next picture, we've added a small amount of dilute hydrochloric acid to each beaker, one milliliter of 0.01 molar hydrochloric to be exact. And notice what happened to the unbuffered solution. The addition of a small amount of acid resulted in a drastic change in pH. It's dropped from 8.0 to below 4 and shows the characteristic color change of methyl orange indicator to red in acidic solutions. The buffered solution, on the other hand, has remained basic. The addition of acid doesn't appear to have shifted the pH that much at all. And this is the power of a buffer. It resists changes in pH with the addition of extra acids and bases. A buffer works this way because it's composed of relatively equal amounts of either a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. For example, a buffer could be composed of a 0.1 molar acetic acid solution combined with 0.1 molar solution of the salt of sodium acetate. If extra base is added to this solution, it'll be neutralized by the weak acid present. And if extra acid is added to the buffer, it'll be neutralized by reaction with the conjugate base. Because the, these are weak acids and bases, and they are conjugates of each other, the opposing equilibrium of the two substances helps maintain relatively equal concentrations, and relatively consistent pHs. So here's a graphical re representation of that buffer. CH3COOH is just another way of writing the formula for acetic acid. And its conjugate base is the acetate ion that's found in the sodium acetate portion of the buffer. Now in this example, we'll start with equal concentrations of acetic acid and its conjugate base. If we add extra acid in the form of the hydronium ion, it will react with the conjugate base. And that will shift the equilibrium in the reverse direction to the left. So as a result of this shift, the levels of the weak acid actually do rise a little bit relative to the amount of the conjugate base that's present in the buffer. And that will shift the pH to be a little bit lower as a result. But it's a very minor rise compared to what it would have been if there was no conjugate base present to neutralize the added hydronium ion. Now in the same way we can add hydroxide ion. And this will react with the acetic acid present in the buffer and push the equilibrium in the forward direction to the right. Again, the level of the acetic acid will drop a little bit and the level of the conjugate base will rise as a result of this shift. And that will actually push the pH to be just a little bit more basic or a little higher, but it's not a drastic change as it would be if the hydroxide hadn't been neutralized by the weak acetic acid. So we can calculate the pH of this buffer using our acid dissociation equilibrium. 
So this is the equation for the Ka. This Ka is for acetic acid. Um, it's our acetic acid plus water breaks apart into its conjugate base and hydronium ion. We can write the Ka expression for that particular equation. And we can also put together an ICE table to calculate our equilibrium concentrations. So we'll start with our initial concentrations for both the acetic acid and its conjugate base as 0.100 moles per liter. And we'll assume that our hydronium ion concentration is pretty much zero initially. We can now assign our change row. We know we're gonna have to add to hydronium since we can't go below zero, so it has to be plus X. And that means that we're also gonna add to our other product, which is the acetate ion. And we'll subtract from our acetic acid. Now we can combine these rows. We get X is gonna be equal to our hydronium ion concentration at equilibrium. And for our acetate uh, ion, it's going to be 0.1 plus X. And for the acetic acid, it's 0.1 minus X. We can use the approximation that X is small relative to our initial concentrations because our Ka value is pretty small at 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. So that means that we can go ahead and say that at equilibrium, acetic acid, acetic acid and the acetate ion are both going to be approximately 0.1. And we can substitute this into our equilibrium expression, and this is what we get. So you can see that the point ones are actually going to cancel each other out here. And we're going to be left with X, which is the same as our hydronium ion concentration, is equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5. We should check our assumption that uh, we used that X is small compared to our initial concentrations. So we'll take that value for X and divide it by the initial concentration times 100. We get 0.018%, which is much less than 5%. So our assumption is valid. And we can go ahead and use this concentration for hydronium ion to calculate our pH. So the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 5 is 4.74. And that's the pH we can expect for this buffer. So the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is actually just a rearrangement of the acid dissociation expression to solve for pH more directly. And it allows us to calculate pH for a buffer system without necessarily going through the ICE table. And it works as long as the X is small approximation is valid for the weak acid present in the buffer. So when the Ka for the acid present is 10 to the negative 3 or smaller. Now I should note that this equation will only work for a buffer system. The way it works, or the way that we rearrange our Ka expression, is that we isolate hydronium ion concentration by itself. So that means that we'll multiply our Ka expression by the acid concentration, which is represented here by HA, and divide both sides by the conjugate base concentration, which is represented here as A to the negative, the anion of your acid. When we do that, we end up with this expression, with hydronium ion by itself. We can use this expression to solve for pH directly. Since pH is just the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration, we take the negative log. We do have to take the negative log of both sides if we take it of one. And what this will ultimately give us is that pH from the negative log of our hydronium ion concentration equals the negative log of our acid dissociation constant, which is often represented as pKa, and it's simply the same idea as pH, it's just the negative log of the Ka, plus the log of your base concentration over your acid. 
So the negative log, um, the, the properties of logs, that the negative of a log is simply equal to the positive of the log of the inverse of the number in parentheses. So in this case, since we're already dealing with the ratio, that negative simply flips our fraction around, so it becomes base over acid. So let's look at a few examples of using the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to calculate the pH of a buffer system. So we'll start with calculating the pH of a buffer that contains 0 0.500 moles per liter of pyruvic acid and 0 0.450 moles per liter of its conjugate base contained in sodium pyruvate. So we can look up the acid dissociation constant for our acid in the system pyruvic acid, and we'd find that it's 4.1 times 10 to the negative 3. Now we'll use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation to calculate the pH of this system. And so we'll start with the pKa term. Remember that pKa is the negative log of whatever your Ka value is. So in this case, it's the negative log of 4.1 times 10 to the negative 3. I've carried a lot more significant figures than I need here, and I've marked um, the final decimal place that ultimately um, I should round to. Since there's two significant figures in my Ka value, I carry two decimal places in my log. Next, we'll deal with our concentrations. Our conjugate base is the sodium pyruvate and our weak acid is pyruvic acid. So we can substitute these into our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. We get 2.3872 plus the log of base over acid, so 0 0.450 over 0 0.500. And if we calculate uh, this log term, we get negative 0.04576. So we combine these two terms, the pKa and the result from the log of our base over acid, and we get 2.34144. I'll round to the, ne to the least number of decimal places in my two terms, so that's actually to the hundredths place, and so that becomes 2.34 for the calculated pH for this buffer system. Let's look at another example. This time let's calculate the pH of the buffer that results from mixing 60 milliliters of 0 0.250 molar formic acid and 15 milliliters of 0.2 molar sodium formate. And the Ka value for formic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative four. So we can start with our pKa it's the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4, which is 3.7447. Now, we should note that for the concentration of our base and our acid, that the concentrations in the formula, the Henderson-Hasselbalch formula, have to represent the final concentrations once those substances are combined in the buffer. So what we're given in the problem is actually the concentration before we've mixed them together. And once we've mixed them together, the volume of the solution changes, and that's going to change the concentration of our acid and our base. So we know this, that the final concentration is simply going to be equal to the moles of the solute we add together, divided by the final volume of the combined buffer solution. And we can calculate the moles of the solute, whether that sol solute is the weak acid or the conjugate base, by multiplying the initial volume that we mix together of that particular solution times its initial molarity. So for example, for our conjugate base, sodium formate, we start with the initial volume, which is 15 milliliters or 0 0.0150 liters. We multiply that by the initial concentration of sodium formate, which is 0 0.200 moles per liter. Our liters are gonna cancel out, and that will give us our numerator portion, the moles of sodium formate. 
we divide this by the total volume of the final buffer, which is going to be 15 mils plus 60 milliliters. So that's 0 0.0150 liters plus 0 0.0600 liters. And when we plug all of this into our calculator, we find that the final concentration of our sodium formate is actually 0 0.0400 moles per liter. We do the same thing for the weak acid, the formic acid. This time we multiply the initial volume of the formic acid by its initial molarity and divide by the total volume of the final buffer. And we get a final solution uh, concentration for our, our formic acid of 0 0.200 moles per liter. So we can plug these values into our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. Our pKa of 3.7447 plus the log of our base concentration of our acid concentration. So 0 0.0400 divided by 0 0.200. And we can combine these two terms to give us a pH of 3.0457. We round to two decimal places to represent the uh, number of digits in our Ka value, which is the least number of significant figures that we have. Here's one last example. This time, we're going to calculate the pH of a buffer that is 0 0.50 molar ammonia, NH3, a weak base, and 0 0.20 molar ammonium chloride, which is its conjugate acid. So this is a weak base and conjugate acid system. Now, if we go to look up the uh, K values for this, we're going to find a KB value for ammonia. We're not necessarily going to find a KA value for ammonium chloride. But our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is based upon the Ka value for the acid present in the buffer system. So we just need to calculate the Ka for a conjugate acid. So remember that the Ka of a conjugate acid is simply equal to Kw divided by Kb. And Kw is 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. That's the dis dissociation constant for the autoionization process of water. So we divide our Kb value into that, and we get 5.556 times 10 to the negative 10 for the Ka of ammonium chloride. And again, I'm carrying a lot more uh, digits than I need to for my final answer. And I've simply underlined in red um, the last digit that I would keep if I were to round at this point. So I know where to round for significant figures in my final answer. So I'll calculate my pKa um, with this Ka for ammonium chloride, and I get 9.255. Our base concentration is ammonia, 0 0.50 moles per liter, and our acid is the ammonium chloride, 0 0.20 moles per liter. We substitute this into our Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, and we carry through with the calculation, and we end up with 9.6529 for the pH of our basic buffer. And again, we round to uh, two decimal places because in logs we round to the number of decimal places that we have for significant figures in our original numbers. So we have two significant figures in our original KB, which translates into two decimal places in our finally, final uh, pH, 965 so in summary, buffers are solutions that resist changes in pH with the addition of an acid or a base. They're composed of relatively equal concentrations of a weak acid and its conjugate base, or a weak base and its conjugate acid. And the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation can be used to simplify the calculation of the pH of a buffer.